Hey, hey, welcome. It's Meredith. I'm here with our message for Wednesday, the 16th of September, 2020. We're using Bonefire Tarot for our message today. <laughs> uh, if you haven't heard already, I am doing an additional daily reading. It is on my Instagram feed. And for those of you who don't have Instagram, it is on my website. All the links are below in the description box for you. So check that out when you have a moment. Uh, three cards from the bottom. This is the potential theme of energy unfolding in the day for us. And our first card is the Fool. Very sweet card. Beginning of the tarot. The Fool is at zero. <laughs> Just beginning a new journey. And some of the elements or qualities of the Fool. A little bit of wonder in awe and innocence as if we are seeing something for the first time the fool also is unconcerned of consequences and I suspect that this comes from the many journeys through the major arcana because it is truly the fool's journey through the major arcana so how many times has the fool done this right how inexperienced is the fool really these are questions I ask every time we turn this card over and I do feel that those questions are a great invitation to us. No matter how many times we've done something, uh, no matter how many times we've taken a particular journey <laughs> through our own inner landscape, what's there to see, feel, know, sense, perceive with awe, wonder, fresh eyes, and have we released the resistance or fear of consequences. Hmm. So, consider that while you contemplate the fool today. Next we have, oh, beautiful card. Three of Cups, Celebration. This one's been showing up quite a bit lately. Those are the ladies from Strength, Justice, and Temperance on that card. And They've all come together on the Three of Cups to celebrate, truly celebrate joy, happiness, love, connection, friendship, <laughs> all the things we really enjoy. So we're bringing some awe, some wonder, some pure, raw, unfiltered happiness to our connections. We're sharing with the people we know, love, and trust. And it's extremely rewarding. Not bad for a Wednesday. Is this one of those days where none of us go to work? <laughs> yep. Yeah, we're working remotely from home and we call in sick. <laughs> now we call in for a mental health day. Oh, well, we might actually need that. <laughs> because this dude was running with scissors and <laughs> now they're in his eye. That's the Seven of Swords. Um... <laughs> Anyway, Seven of Swords, that's the card where our contemplations could rob us of our own joy. So isn't it beautiful that we have the Fool and the Three of Cups before this Seven? It's another arrangement of cards that's showing us how we're in this incredible atmosphere to tend to experiences that are still with us, that may not be serving us, and are ready to go. The seven, all sevens in tarot about heaven touching earth. That was the main theme of yesterday's reading. You know, we were making magic there. <laughs> we were being the bridge. We are the bridge between heaven and earth. So anything that restricts, interrupts, becomes an obstacle within that flow will require our attention. And if we're bringing the fool and the three of cups kind of attention we're bringing raw happiness and joy to what was something we considered a problem or a challenge and <clears throat> pardon we're bringing it to the card called or nicknamed the thief so where are we in a mental process preventing becoming an obstacle to heaven touching earth within us that's exactly the point the fulcrum point at which we'll discover what has to go. Something that we can love with kindness, compassion, unconditional acceptance, and then 
more unfiltered joy. Wonderful. Let's see what goes with it all. <laughs> yeah. We're starting out with the Emperor here. That's some powerful energy. The Emperor, the Empress, mother and father of the tarot. They rule the Empire. His nickname is the Know-It-All. I call him the Experienced It All. He has so much to bring, so much to offer. And I love that he shows up here with the Fool. Because even the Emperor can come with wide-eyed wonder and awe and his own sense of innocence to something he has experienced before. There's something new to bring to it. There's always more to bring to whatever we are experiencing. And we can look at everything with fresh eyes. And I feel, I feel the Emperor is reminding us of that today. Have the wisdom and the experience to know that you can bring fresh eyes and an open heart to an old story, Seven of Swords. <laughs> and freshen it up. Joy it up. Bring the happy, right? What's coming with our Emperor? <laughs> the Tower. Well, you know, we're nice and rich here with Major Arcana cards again. And, you know, the Major Arcana... I don't bring time really into the readings, but the major arcana cards suggest a longer period of experience, a richer period of experience. It's not so temporary as the minor suit. Uh, so here we are with the emperor in the tower. <laughs> I love this because that tower could be old business and we're bringing something brand new to it that's upgraded in its frequency yeah, so the emperor would wisely tear down a tower of an old belief system mm -hmm. and an old story, the vulture thoughts grabbing hold of us, right? He's going to pluck those right out of the sky with his slingshot <laughs> or something a little more <laughs> significant, but it's going to bring down a tower. That's what's going to happen. And lately when I look at the tower... And I see this lightning bolt. I feel it represents the light within us. And I feel that something new is being cracked wide open for us to shine even brighter with. And I feel the fool's energy in that lightning bolt. And then <laughs> we have the King of Wands. Our fiery, passionate, creative King of Wands. And when I look at his card today... I see some real creative thought, some unusual thought. You know, here on the channel we ask the question, what have I not considered? We ask that often, and we are encouraged to keep asking it. And I feel that on the King of Wands. Not only has he asked the question, he's come up with a few answers, and they are quite unconventional. They are out of the normal realm of consideration. And I feel that he practically applies whatever it is he came up with today. And there's some real fire on it. So here we've got some strong Aries direct energy in the Emperor. Now we have Aries, Leo, Sagittarius here in the King of Wands. And I want to look up something on the tower from my great big huge book of tarot. Um, Bear with me for a moment, please, while I do that. Oh, it flipped right open. Imagine that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the tower is linked in some way to the chariot. So there's dynamic energy here in the tower. And its element is fire. So we have three fire cards here. Additionally, the tower is connected to Mars, and I believe that Mars is in retrograde right now. Correct me if I don't have that right, please, in the comments, but I do think we have an influence of Mars being in retrograde. So look at all the fire there, and with a connection in some way to the chariot, I'll have to read up on that a little bit more. There's a lot of motion there. It's, some of it's unexpected, but I feel like the what have I not considered question has produced the unexpected within us and we're taking action on it passionately. And then we have the Two of Cups. Yes, because 
whatever's going on with that seven of swords has created a disturbance in the force within self relationship we have divine masculine divine feminine we're in a beautiful embrace with self relationship and we have this to share all of our amazing connections with those we know love and trust and so whatever's going on in that seven is out of date needs an upgrade needs some love some unconditional love healing acceptance and allowing so it can pass off the foundation and it passes off the foundation brilliantly right there in the tower what i feel here is something from last week's readings in that we had the message that we were not messing around something was being directed at us in the way of projection and we were not in acceptance of that whereas previously and with less experience we we may have been extremely kind and a people pleaser in that kindness and then that compromised our foundation that put a crack in it and you know how we've been journeying here through the last couple of years of tarot card messages we've become uncompromising in self relationship not uncompromising in a negative way but in a divine way we understand what it is to maintain the kind of sphere of influence that we have created with the divine all. And that's not something that we want to tear down. We'll tear down the old stuff. We'll thank it. We'll have gratitude and appreciation. But we'll recycle all that goodness into the goodness, the energy atmosphere that we have been experiencing for many months now. <laughs> okay. Now we have the Four of Cups. So that's Ace of Cups to the power of four. This card traditionally has a message of potential apathy on it. And I feel that connection today in the card, along with that Seven of Swords. So if you're feeling kind of ho-hummy, <laughs> it may be the influence of that Seven of Swords. Vulture thoughts can put us in this position and, and can have us... Uh, experiencing a limited view of things because on the four of cups we have three cups that are typically knocked over before the person and they're looking at those as prior divine and cosmic gifts of the ace of cups and pure raw love and bliss right and we don't necessarily see the fourth cup on its way in so we've gone into an apathetic type of attitude and perhaps lost our flair temporarily <laughs> And that's what the old story on the seven, the belief system programming, the mental trap, the vulture thoughts can have us doing. So in the traditional meaning of the four of cups, let's just take a peek at the artwork here and see what that inspires. If we feel how this card looks, we've got work to do on that seven, but we have loads of joy, happiness, wonder and awe to pour on it and like an emperor <laughs> wielding a lightning bolt with a whole lot of creative fire and passion will do it i do feel as well that the four of cups is a card about counting our blessings and because we are in that kind of attitude more more keeps coming so that message is making its way through the reading quite nicely and oh my gosh I love what comes next. The death card. Talk about success. <laughs> the death card sweeps the foundation for us. It gets rid of the old business simultaneously as we are bringing in the new business, the fool. What a fantastic combination here. And we're doing it from a foundation of happiness, connection, and love within self and within the relationships that mean the most to us people um, the people that are our soul tribe or make up our soul tribe are in support of cheering us on and we're doing the same for them there's an energy of community in this reading today so we're speaking with connecting to those that uh, really do have our highest and greatest potential in mind so they're rooting us on through these moments of the four of cups I had this experience yesterday with my friend Kate. Uh, I had a, a just the briefest 
briefest little low moment and she was right there and we were lifting each other up beautifully and that's how this goes this is how you sweep something off the foundation and that's exactly what I did in those moments with her I I dug right into the death card for myself in an inspired way I had a tower moment and wisely and with experience embraced my creative fire and passion and stayed connected to myself I didn't go down some old you know rabbit hole like this one here <laughs> yeah just moments and that's how it can happen for us mm, I love this yeah look at that the nine of swords comes next right on the other side of the death card we are not fooling around with this stuff anymore. We're like, hey, look at that obstacle. Ooh, look, I'm in resistance, yay. <laughs> what can I do about that? I know exactly what to do about that. I'm gonna bring my emperor and his lightning bolt because I love myself and I love this life that I've created with the divine all. And I love the kind of celebration and the fresh perspective that it all creates for me. And those connected to me. On the other side of the Nine of Swords, our Anxiety Awake at 3 a.m. card is the Empress. So we've started this portion of the reading with the Emperor. And we finish it with the Empress. Isn't that something? And the Tower's in there. In the theme of the day, of course. But this is what the Tower is cleaning up, clearing up for us. Seven of Swords. Beautiful. So she's love. She is Venus in Cancer. Oh, she's about cycles, gestation, nurturing. So she's a beautiful representation of what we're holding in heart space and why we have the strength, the willingness, the fortitude to take a look at our Seven of Swords. You've got the Emperor and the Empress on either side of all these other cards. And we've got fresh, raw joy to pour on the Seven of Swords. It doesn't have to be a drama. It doesn't have to be a, oh, wah, wah, wah. It doesn't. It can be taken care of lovingly, happily. Whatever it is for you, whatever you are, as a dear soul says to me, grinding on right now. <laughs> you can clean that up with laughter. Mm-hmm. All right. Angel answers, my friends, if you have a question. Here's a great moment to ask it. I just saw let go fly by here in the shuffle and I just saw it a second time. <laughs> These cards can confirm what we just read in Bonefire or they can be a completely fresh message for you. It's something unrelated. <laughs> here we go. It's up to you emphatically, yes indeed. You have a choice here. You can choose happiness. And the card coming after it is <laughs> remain positive. So choose happiness. <laughs> because that creates emphatic success. Which is, you know, what I'm calling out for on the death card. The death card is truly helping us as we bring some something to a close. A chapter to a close. An experience to its fulfillment and complete. It's completeness. We're done with something and we're ready to let go. I really love for that card to come falling out. <laughs> oh, instead though, we have listen to your intuition, which is another message we've had for weeks. Pay close attention. Yesterday I was an intuitive tuning fork. Oh my goodness. I can't even believe some of the stuff that I plucked out of my friend's head. <laughs> Things she had never shared at all. And there it was. So listen to your intuition. And I know yesterday's message or yesterday's reading carried that message. So we're on overflow with our intuitive gifts. Do listen, consider, and take action on it. <laughs> okay, next, last affirmation from the universe has your back. When I lean on the faith of the universe, peace becomes real. Mmm, beautiful. Put that next to your Seven of Swords, right? 
All right, everybody, have a beautiful Wednesday, peak of the week. Uh, do check out the Instagram reading. It's a daily love reading. Linked for you in the description box, as I mentioned. And peace, joy, happiness, fresh perspectives, awe and wonder abound. <laughs> Namaste. See ya.